Hey everybody, this is uh, Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. How are you guys doing today? Hey, uh, I've gotten a request to uh, do a video podcast on uh, team discipline, so about a week ago. So uh, I've uh, thought about it, done a little research, read a bunch of stuff, tried to organize my thoughts, and try to put something together, and hopefully this helps uh, me and even you guys. Uh, as I kind of go through it on this podcast. So, uh, like I said, this is a requested video. Uh, so shout out to uh, who requested that. Uh, I've been looking at it about a week, and I think I've got everything uh, organized here. Uh, you know, I've read a bunch of stuff, probably 20 or 30 or articles on it, and some of my stuff from the past and our league stuff. And a uh, couple of things here before we jump in is... Uh, your players and your team are really a reflection of you and your coaching staff. So if there's not a lot of discipline in your team, a lot of the things and things I've read and, you know, I kind of believe it too, that uh, maybe you're reflecting that onto your team and they're seeing that maybe in your staff and yourself. So you really got to look at yourself. Are you and your staff, are they the role models that you're hoping and expecting uh, your players to see and then they will uh, basically look up to you and do what you're doing? So that's one thing. Uh, you get what uh, – I watch, I spell check. You get what you coach. A lot of guys have whole, heard that. So, you know, if you coach it, that's what you get. If you ignore behavior, well – by just not coaching it, you're getting that behavior because you've ignored it. So if you're ignoring it, you're kind of condoning that type of behavior or that that skill set or technique. Uh, you need to correct whatever you don't like and coach that up. So so really, um, you know, make sure you you know you you got to coach it because you, you're getting what you coach. So which is kind of a reflection of your players or looking at you and your staff. So the other thing that to, to, is you really need to accept, set your expectations with your parents and players fairly high of what you expect, not only of the game and learning the game and those kind of things, but the discipline area, you know, what you're expecting there. And, and you know, if you're coaching a youth football team, uh, you really need to set those expectations with the parents and get them to buy in on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and you really got to coach the parents with the kids in youth football. I always like to be really tough uh, at first, uh, and then you can, you can kind of ease up on those expectations and what you're looking for as the season progressive. But if you're easy and then try to get tough, uh, there's like a parent revolt. So just, you know, most parents think uh, football coaches are tough and they're old school and they're going to hold, you know, a lot of parents want that for their kids because they're too afraid to be that disciplinarian. So you've kind of, you know, you're kind of getting looked at that. Uh, so if you like it or not, you, you, you've got it. So be tough early, uh, especially on, on really everything. Uh, otherwise you, you're going to get, uh, that bad behavior and bad practices there. So be tough early. And that goes for your, uh, assistant coaches too. Uh, let's see. Here's an outline. I've got this outline here. So like I said, look to yourself. Uh, are you the role model? Uh, are you a good role model for the kids to look up to? Uh, do you cuss a lot? Are you doing that at practice? Are you, do you have alcohol in your breath? Are you smoking? Uh, do you, you know, horseplay with the coaches? Uh, are you talking? If you're, you know, are you talking to other coaches while one coach is talking? Those players see that and they think they can get away with that. So really start looking to yourself. You know, are you that role model? The other thing that I see a ton, uh, and I give this, this is almost from a lecture that I give to our uh, league for new coaches. I give that presentation and training session to them is, you know, are you an organized person in your life? And you need to also be that organized person uh, as a coach and with your team. Uh, you know, you've got, you know, 20 to 25 players on your team. That means you've got another 50 parents 
uh, hundred fans, maybe of grandparents and other people to come to games. And, you know, they're expecting you to, to be organized. I know, uh, if, uh, other kids have been on other teams and those coaches are more organized. They're not going to be happy if you're just, Hey, child, fly by your seat and do something. And everything's kind of miscombobulated. So definitely be organized. Uh, and there's a whole other videos and being organized and what you can do there, but, uh, uh, make sure you're organized. That'll help with the discipline. Cause, uh, if you're organized, it looks undisciplined uh, from a parent standpoint. The big thing is communication. Uh, you know, a lot of coaches don't want to communicate. Unfortunately, in today's environment, everybody wants to talk with helicopter parents. Everybody wants to be involved. You have got to communicate, and you really have got to hold that parent meeting early, day one or even before the first practice. Set the tone. My parent meeting notes, and I've got – that in another video and some outlines over at coachparker.org. It's like three pages, and I outline exactly what I want from everything. So there's really nothing left to chance or, you know, their imagination from a parent. Really set that tone and set it down. And like I said, I'm pretty tough in that parent meeting, and I let them know that I'm old school and tough. And I don't put up with bad behavior. So just set that tone, get that communication out there. You know, you can be tough without being kind of an asshole. So just set that in that meeting. Uh, you know, set your rules, the standards, and your expectations. You know, outline everything. You know, absences, tardiness, mouthpieces, etc. You know, where that's coming from. The other thing that I know I've done a lot lately and uh, a lot of coaches do is, you know, I really try to tell the players I love and respect them. And by I try to learn their names by this name game. Uh, and that's a drill that you can catch on another video. I try to learn their names basically uh, before I get to even practice. The first practice, I try to know their names. But I set up this name game. So everybody and all the coaches learn their names and parents. And so the players really like it that you're not saying, hey, kid, come here, or I don't what's your name again? Uh, they really appreciate that you've taken the time to know their game. I also give them pet nicknames, um, and I try to talk to them like little adults and not yell at them as much. If I do yell at them for something, I always say at the end, you know I love you, and I know I'm trying to make you better. So, And it gets along that, that standpoint. A lot of coaches talk about fam, you know, the team as a family. Uh, I, I don't say family, but I talk about brothers and football and that kind of stuff and love. So it's really, you know, that's you get the idea what we're trying to do there. The other thing is have empathy for a situation and the, maybe the player background and what's going on with the player so you can do that. Um, the other thing is uh, a lot of coaches, why you have, uh, and I know it happens to me, is especially the first couple of practices, we're trying to review and look at players and the lines are a little bit longer. Um, is if your drills and your lines are, if, if your drill lines are long or your drills are boring, the kids are going to, to start talking because they have nothing else to do and they're bored. So try to keep everything really fast paced. Uh, otherwise, that'll help cut down on a lot of discipline issues if the practice is so fast paced they're tired and they don't have the time to think about anything else but what you've got going on so if you keep that pace up they don't have a lot of time to get bored and start having discipline issues uh, the other thing is you know uh, you really want to look at uh, you know this is kind of new school versus old school is positive motivation over punishment motivation you know, do you have patience to let that happen? Uh, I know with younger kids, sometimes the Pavlov thing speeds up their attention a lot faster. You know, if you talk or do this, you've got to run to the fence versus I know you can do that. You just need to be quiet. We'll get through this and pat them on the back. So you just need to look at what player is more motivated by a positive or the punishment. I know I'm, I was more motivated by just talking to me logically as a player and telling me what I needed to do uh, versus, you know, run laps. Uh, I thought that was always stupid and wasted time. But 
some kids need, you know, they, they don't, they won't listen long enough for you even to tell them logically why you're trying to tell them. So sometimes, you know, uh, I've done up and downs and that did get my attention. So maybe some punishment there, but it's really looking to you and looking to the player and seeing what works best for that player. Uh, look, the other thing is equal treatment for players. Young players see that you may have a favorite or you may be coaching your son and he's not really that good, but you're giving him everything and he never gets punished and they don't like that. And so you may get be getting bad behavior because you're playing favorites and your son, who's not really that good, seems to be getting all the good positions on the team. That'll cause a lot of discipline issues with players and also with parents. So you need to deal with that. Uh, the other thing that helps uh, the discipline uh, issues and punishment going forward is when you have your parent meeting and your team meet meeting, the players and parents buy into the rules. And a lot of times I'll ask players, okay, for punishment, we're going to do up and downs or we're running to the fence. This is the beginning of the season. What do you guys prefer or should we punish for this and this? And uh, this is with older teams. And they'll tell you, and, you know, it works. That buy-in, everybody knows if you did this, you know, uh, with older teams, if, you know, certain stud captain players on the team don't make tackles, you know, they know, and they'll just walk over and do five push-ups. So they, those are kind of things that go on there. So just, just make sure, one of the things that will help out is make sure the parents and players buy into all your rules and punishment and uh, set that up right. Uh, if you do get into a situation where you're having to deal with kind of a hairy punishment issue, uh, stay unemotional about the situ situation. Just say, you know, my rules say this, the team rules say this, the league says this, this is how it's going to be. And, you know, less said about it, trying to explain, because some people you just can't, you know, the further you talk, uh, they just don't want to hear it. So just be short and sweet and set that tone. Uh, the other thing that, that uh, you know, you've got to really talk about uh, is you're not only coaching these youth football players, but uh, you're coaching the parents too. And make sure you, accept, you uh, set expectations with the parents always. I know that if we have trouble with the player or a bad, or bad player has gotten better, we let parents know, hey, your player's getting better. Or if a good player has taken a nosedive, we let the parents know, hey, can you help us out with this? We also talk to parents about, hey, if your player has got bad grades or something's happened, don't hold them out. Let us know how we can help you maybe, you know, have them run some wind sprints or some things like that. So, uh, you know, talk to the parents. A lot of coaching staffs. Uh, don't talk to the parents. At the bottom of my practice plan, on all the practice plans I have out, hand out, it says coaches mingle with the parents. That's a big thing. You know, when you know parents and they know you, everybody's less likely to get into a tizzy over a small issue. So there we go there. So here are some discipline areas. I don't know if these are all of them, but these are things that I, I've seen and kind of, you know, what, what, to do about them. We can talk about the punishment in a minute. You know, uh, I, the first one really is, especially for little kids, I, you know, uh, this general talking and horseplay is rampant. And you really, like I said, try to keep your, your practices fast paced. But, you know, teachers go through this at school. They'll be talking while you're talking, talking in drill lines, talking in the huddle, push to general pushing, shoving, not listening to you talking on the sidelines during the game, running over to their parent or the cheerleaders, and just general horseplay before games. I've actually had two kids break their arms doing horseplay before games when they were supposed to be setting down, uh, resting before the game, and so we try to control that. So, you know, you just need to kind of have your philosophy with your staff of how you're going to handle these simple little general talking horseplay issues because with younger teams you know there's a lot of that as they get older it kind of stops but uh i know with six and seven and five year olds you, 
you could be punishing kids all day long for that kind of stuff. So you really need to figure out where the line is on that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I'm always a big, you know, go to the fence, especially if they're talking while I'm talking, or, hey, do 10 up and downs real quick or burpees. So that's some stuff I do for that. We'll talk more in a minute about that. Then you've got these other issues, the attendance, tardiness, equipment, missing kind of stuff that can get excessive with some kids and, you know, unexcused absences are really a big deal to us. In today's environment with smartphones and email, I mean, we we put out emails, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, we put out everything. There's really no excuse for an unexcused absences. We had one last season. Uh, unbelievable. I can't, I can't believe it by a top running back. But, uh, you know, you just need to, to figure out how to address that. Um, Excessive absences, you know, if they're just absent one practice a week, uh, you know, need to talk about that to their parents and to the player. Uh, or if they are just always late. You know, remember, these are kids. They're not driving. So it's really a parent issue on a lot of these, and that's what we found out. Um, so you kind of have to deal with that. Is it the kid or the parent on these absences? you got to look at that. Excessive equipment loss or forgetting equipment, that's usually a kid thing, and we really put that on the kids. And so equipment losses we're looking at there. Lost mouthpieces, that's usually 25 up and downs for me if you forget you lose your mouthpiece. I'll give you one for free, but it's a quick 25 burpees. You know, if you forget your uniform to a game, and that sometimes causes an issue, so are you, you know, Younger kids, are you going to do that? Because that's really kind of a parent thing. So you got to kind of look at that situation and deal with, with that there. Uh, bullying, and bullying and fighting. And make sure they're old enough to kind of understand what's going on. Uh, you know, if it's it really at the end of a drill and it kind of happens and it's kind of a one-off, I don't mind. You know, okay, I can let that go and maybe they run to the fence and cool off. But if they're fighting in the locker room or fighting before practice and they're fighting about something that, you know, that it's just kept festering, I have zero tolerance for that. So I'll pretty much, you're out for a game or you're out for a practice kind of thing or, you know, the league says you're gone. So I'm pretty zero tolerance on that. Cussing and bad language. I came up in the YMCA environment as a player and as a flag and t-ball baseball coach. And so I do not cuss. I, even for butt, I say butaki. And I, you know, I, I try not to cuss. Sometimes it slips out, but I am not a cusser when I am around the kids at practice or in games. And so uh, that's the role model piece that I use. And when I hear cussing or bad language by the kids, I'll nip that in the bud real quick. So uh, I think cussing is kind of an entry kind of discipline issue to other bad behavior. So if you let this cussing and bad language go on, and uh, I think it just leads to, to bad behavior. So I try to keep all of my music, everything to, uh, you know, G level. I'm not playing some of the songs that I that I like to listen to that has a lot of cussing language in there so the kids can hear that. I cut all of that out. So uh, I know you might watch some of the cable uh, youth football teams and all that cussing that goes on. I personally cannot watch it. It disgusts me. Uh, so uh, I, I can't imagine being on a team and uh, having that. This season I heard – one of the coaches say, tell his team that they sucked and they needed to work harder, and then they were running laps after practice. I, I, I. That's not that's not what I do. If you if you've lost in a scrimmage or in a game, uh, and your team is cussing, that's you. From my standpoint, losses are front or coaches. Usually, you didn't set up your team. To play a team good enough, and sometimes you know, hey, especially in youth football, you're you got outmatched talent-wise. There's not a whole lot of things you can do on that. Okay, if if you want to address bad play, move kids around, but don't don't punish kids 
because they're physically incapable to do some things. So there is my deal in cussing and bad language. Sorry, I got on tangent there. Alcohol and drugs, I'm zero tolerance for that. Uh, you know, uh, parents don't understand if you come to practice drunk or you're on drugs. And, and look, you may be on some pain medication. Let the parents know or don't show up to practice if your medication is making you loopy and look drunk in front of the kids because they don't really know any difference. So be careful of that. Uh, so I have a zero tolerance on that. Uh, so I don't think uh, alcohol at the practice field or at games should be there. Now, if there's a party or you go to restaurants after it, uh, I don't see an issue there, but I don't think you should be drunk in front of the kids. Uh, so look at that. Uh, you know, there's another thing as you get older and the kids, you know, there could be conduct detrimental to a team if they're a junior high in high school. Uh, you know, I, I would probably review each case, each player, what actually happens. And depending on what happened, there really would be zero tolerance there. And to get back on the team, it would be a pretty high bar to achieve. But uh, I'm pretty much old school on stuff and do not like horseplay and bad behavior and fighting. Uh, I don't like that at all. So I'm pretty tough on this stuff. Uh, the last thing here, uh, you know, uh, that I've got is parental behavior. You know, do, uh, you know, I really abusive language with the with your with the player on the team that could be their son or another person is or against coaches is no no. Physical with coach, uh, that's a no no. Uh, you know, if they're wanting to meet all the time and keep begging you for meetings and always after practice, that could be an issue. If there's just constant bickering about what their son is doing or what you're doing, uh, bowed mouthing team, players, coaches, uh, threats from parents. Some of those are just like, and you can set that up in your, in your parent meeting. You know, those are just, you're gone based on your team rules. And if your league, your league may, be, may even govern some of that. I know our league governs some of that. So I've had probably three instances over my 20 plus years coaching tackle of physical altercations, uh, abusive, almost physical with parents. Uh, so you've got to, you've got to kind of weigh that in and how you handle that. So there's some, you know, those are kind of the general areas of discipline that I always see. And I think most of those can be handled through a good parent meeting and setting the correct expectations and uh, good follow-up communication and fair discipline. So here's some punishments that everybody kind of normally sees. Uh, you can ignore the behavior, which, you know, I know is a good, drives me absolutely mad, but a lot of folks say just kind of ignore the first three or four times this happens. If it's continuing, uh, then kind of address it. So, you know, in practice, you may see the same kid do it two or three times, and on the fourth time, it's like bump, run to the fence, um, or you just may say something, not make him run, and give him a warning, and then make him go. I'm pretty quick on saying run to the fence, uh, and our fence is usually like 200 yards away, so it's a it's a good run over the over there. It does waste a lot of time and practice of them running to the fence. Now, if you do it to everybody equally. It's also kind of a conditioning thing because everybody kind of runs over there once a practice, maybe. Uh, so it's really kind of where you are with that. I One of the articles I was reading actually said that making kids run wind sprints and run to the fence could be considered bullying. Um, so just make sure you set that down in your parent meeting so everybody knows it's not bullying. Uh, it's, it's how it's going to work. You can do up and up and downs when they're in line or burpees, like right there as it happens. That doesn't take as much time to run to the fence. I also don't think it actually uh, hurts as much. It gets their attention because they can still kind of talk and sit there and goof around. But I do that also if I'm trying to speed things up uh, for that little punishment piece of it. Uh, the other thing, you know, something's really bad. It's happened. I mean, we've had this in a game, you know, a player 
makes an illegal block on purpose or kind of does something or cusses or said something, you know, we'll pull him to the sideline for a few plays and let them cool down. You just got to know when you do that, you kind of, you kind of lose a player there. The other thing that you can do is this, and I've done this is, you know, usually you've been on a player for a week and they're, you know, about stuff and you can just start ignoring the player and you'll find that they'll automatically start, paying attention to you because they're wanting your attention. The other thing you can do is have somebody they can lose their starting position. You can set them out of practices and games. Of course, you need to check with your league if you can do that. Another thing, you remove from the team. And then there's league rules about – there. we have league rules about removal from a team, setting out games, attendance, and so forth. And so you can, you can piggyback off of that kind of stuff there. Uh, the other thing is, is, you know, if you've got a difficult player, you got to ask yourself, why is that player difficult? Uh, the first one here is kind of a joke in a way, but it's affluenza. You know, is this player just spoiled and they've never been punished before? We actually have a lot of kids like that, that they just get away with bloody murder at home. And so you've got to kind of deal with that and punishment actually works with some of those kids, you know. We've had a lot of kids from broken homes, abusive homes, drugs, alcohol. There's crime in the family. Uh, they've had personal issues come up where there's a legal battle or something. And so what are all those factors in there when you're looking at punishing kids, especially for setting them out of games and that sort of thing, or just, you know, give them a break during the week because they're having a hard time and maybe schoolwork is is hard on them. So look at that because each player needs to be dealt with a little differently sometimes, but you do want to keep punishment equal, but there is, you know, uh, a range of things there that you can look at. You know, we've had a lot of kids that are on this ADHD medication and asthma medications, you know, it, are they having issues there because they haven't taken their meds or they have, and it's, you know, it's changed to, you know, I take blood pressure medication, and I know when mine changes, I'm definitely grumpier and that sort of thing. So deal with that. Does this kid just have an overall handicap that you've got to you've got to understand and deal with? So put all of those things together when you communicate with the player and the parents about about punishment and how that's going to be because each player is different. Review each player and situation when dealing with these guys. Make sure you're empathetic, but at the end of the day, remember, that's one person. You're coaching an entire team. So what is best for the team, and maybe not so much this one person? And a lot of folks forget that. So as a coach, and a head coach especially, you've got to make sure what's good for the team. So in summary here, my discipline, and hopefully I haven't rambled on too long, but I really feel like, again, most of these issues can be solved by a really good parent meeting where you set the high expectations on behavior, where you also hold yourself with high standards as a role model in your coaching staff. Be tough at first. Be organized. Make sure you love and respect all your players. Be fair and be consistent. Uh, you want to address issues quickly, and you want to communicate. You've got to talk about these issues to your parents. You can't just ignore them. If you ignore them, you get the bad behavior. You have to coach out the bad behavior, and that's working with the player and the parents. You've also got to remember that if you're coaching youth football, that's usually 12 years or less, so these are kids. And they may not have been parented at home with heavy discipline. Uh, so you've got to, you know, you've got to have empathy there and understand that situation. And you may have to become uh, that father uncle figure for that particular player and help them grow up as a young person into an adult. So, uh, so there it is. I think, I think, you know, most of the discipline issues can be addressed in the parent meeting and setting expectations. Uh, and being organized. I think you're going to address 90% of all of that. So, But remember, in the end, the team is more important than just one player. Always ask yourself what is best for the team in the long run. And uh, be fair. Be honest. Be true to yourself. 
And uh, remember, to play for fun and winning is funner. Uh, this is Coach Parker. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you can find more free coaching tips over at CoachParker.org. You can also find my playbooks, the Power Wing Beast Offense and the 6-2 Multi-8 Youth Football Defense over at CoachParker.org. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video podcast. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave those below. If you like this, please like it. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe to get future uh, information. And uh, if you need to share it with your coaches, parents, players, etc., please do so. That really helps out. But again, this is Coach Parker. And remember to play for fun and winning is funner. Ciao. Thanks for joining me today. See you guys next time.